Shalom, everybody. Welcome to this week's Journey Through Torah. We're in the Parsha Teruma right now, and uh, we're going to talk about a few things in relationship to our heart and our service and um, what, we're, what we're giving to the community. Now, in this Parsha, we find people are giving to Yah, but what, what's really happening here? Okay, so what led us up to this point? Up to this point, remember, uh, Israel was in Mitzrayim. They were oppressed. They were taken in slavery and they cried out. Yahweh sent Moshe. He said, I want you to be a deliverer for the people. He brought them out, brought them through the sea, the mikvah, a baptism, right? And then uh, brought them into the wilderness. And here they are at the mountain. Now, when they brought them to the mountain, the purpose of bringing them to the mountain was not so that they could learn how to dwell in the wilderness without Egypt. The, the point of bringing them to the mountain was so that they had no other distractions from Yahweh himself, revealing himself to his people, showing them his heart, reaffirming the covenant and the promises that he gave to them, and then to take what they are learning and experiencing here at this mountain to take it wherever they go, namely into the land that was promised, right? So in order for this to happen, they, they, people tend to look back at major events and not to see they can carry these experiences forward with them, right? So it's like, well, I don't want to leave Sinai because, you know, here we're being provided for and, uh, and here, uh, you know, Yahweh is speaking to us and we see that he's here. We want him to go with us. If we go forward, is he going to go with us, right? That's one thing. Another could be um, looking back to return, kind of like, well, no, life is hard here. It's not what I expected. So I want to go back to Egypt. How many times do we hear that? Okay, not getting into that today, but in in this point, um, this parsha Teruma, we're looking at preparing a way to carry the presence of Yahweh with us wherever we go. Now we see that he, he wants to um, have them build a tabernacle, a mishkan from the word shechan, which means to dwell, a dwelling place for His presence. Um, that's important. But he wasn't meant to dwell in a tabernacle made of human hands. He was meant to dwell in a tabernacle made by his hands, right? But in order to give us that example, he shows us the tabernacle, its function, what it looks like, uh, how it was built, how it was constructed, uh, what was involved in it, the people working together to accomplish the task. All of this uh, was coming together so that they could see that when we come together for the purpose of, yeah, we can carry his presence with us. No one person could do it on their own. They had to come together in a place of unity to build the Mishkan, to, so that they could have the presence of Yah dwelling with them wherever they went. Now, even once it was done, when they broke camp and had to move to the next camp, they still had work to do. They still had to break down the pieces. There were certain ways things had to be done. There was order in everything. And, uh, and, and all of this uh, going to the next camp and then making sure that everything was set up properly, exactly the way that it was before. The point of this being yeah, goes with us wherever we go, but he does have ways that he desires for us to walk in. That's why Yeshua, when he came, he said, follow me. He didn't say, think about me or consider me or just profess my name. He said, follow me. All right. So this is, this is a daily life and how, and how we live among the people of Yahweh uh, and how we live among people in a lost and dying world. Right. So all of this works together in preparing a place for him to dwell. And that's what we're going to look at here today. All right. So let's start off with this. Truma in Exodus Shemot, chapter 25, verses 1 and 2. Yahweh says to Moshe, speak to the people of Israel that they take for me a contribution from every man whose heart moves him. You shall receive the contribution for me. So the point I'm making here is, is that so take for me ve'yechachuli. Uh, li is, is the word to take for me. Li is for me. Take is, a, is the word. Uh, so you take for me the contribution. Teruma. Teruma is the name of this parsha. Teruma is what we're talking about. The contribution. That's, uh, that, that's what we're going to get into today. So here the point is, what does it mean when we give a contribution to Yahweh? I mean, does he need anything that we can give him. I mean, anything here on this earth, right? Does he need anything here on this earth? No, not really. I mean, he created all of this, right? And if he created it, how, how would he need it? I mean, he made it. So for us to give him something, it's not really that he needs it. So what's happening here? 
See, this is for us to have an acknowledgement that everything that we have is because of him. Everything that he has given us is, is to be used for him and his kingdom and to show his glory and his honor and to uh, further the cause, right? And, uh, and, and so how do we do that? How can we truly give back to Yahweh, right? So these are some things that we're looking at here. How do we give to Elohim? We give of ourselves for whatever is needed to show forth the phrase I put here is Elohim among us here, now, daily. The point being that when we give to Yahweh, when we're giving of ourselves to the needs of, uh, of the community and the needs of the things among us. Here, it was to have a place among us that Yahweh dwells. Now further, it's not just a place for him to dwell, but it is a place for us to dwell with him. Okay, see that? There, see, it, it goes a step further, doesn't it? It's not just, oh, there's a tabernacle over there and oh, look how nice and beautiful it is and keep going our way. See, it, it's to have a place for him to dwell, but a place where we can dwell with him. That's why there was a need for all Israel to have a central focal point within them. And then when they got into the land, the tabernacle was set up in, in one spot and then it, uh, the people went all over the land, right? So here it's, it's a central gathering point where the people can acknowledge Yahweh is among us, even where, where, wherever we are throughout the rest of the land, right? Wherever, he, wherever we are, Yahweh is with us. But it is a place to acknowledge he dwells with us. We dwell with him, but when we come to dwell with him, we're looking around and we're seeing all of his people are doing the same thing. That's why, uh, example, the Moedim, when, re, when there was a gathering at the tabernacle or in the temple when it stood, um, the, the gathering together for the people of Yahweh, this was a place for all the people of Yahweh to come together and acknowledge, yes, their creator, but also to acknowledge one another. You know, it's a time where if no other time, family got together and even family that you didn't know you had or, uh, or long lost family, you know, family, it, it's a means for us all to come back together and acknowledge in Yahweh, we are gathering together in unity. So how do we truly give to Yah, right? So uh, let's look at this phrase, Ve'yichichuli. And uh, I have here from the Pentateuch from uh, Samson Raphael Hirsch. It says, nothing is to be given directly to God, but the gifts of each individual are to be given to the community for the divine purposes. This implies that it is not the individual, but the community who has to erect the institutions for God's purposes. It is not for single givers, but the community that these arrangements have been established. And... Um, you know, we see in, in Chronicles the same situation, the same phrase is given, you know, when the uh, when the temple was was dedicated. I mean, it was said, how can we give back to you? You know, well, here's the thing. When we make it important to have a place among us for Yahweh to dwell and for us to dwell with him. Yes, I know we are to carry his presence with us wherever we go. We are supposed to do that. But we are also to have a place where we can gather together as one where we can gather in as a community of people and, and, and as brothers and sisters, right? As family, a place where we can gather in together. When we make that important, Yahweh will dwell there. I mean, we, we know the scripture where two or more are gathered, there I am. Absolutely. Okay. But it doesn't mean that he does not want us to come together for a place of, uh, of corporate uh, worship. There's something about praying with yourself, praying with a friend and, 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 and singing together there. And then there's another thing of doing it together as a body. Um, they each have their own different uh, things that, that, it, that it's involved in our hearts, you know, and um, they're each good, but they all have a different flavor, if you will. And, and we're not to forsake any of these things, you know, when uh, Yeshua was here, we say that, well, oh, he, he met people out in the fields and, and they met in the homes and they, and they did all that. Right. But don't misunderstand something. This was not to take the place of them gathering in the synagogues and them gathering at the temple. Right. Because they still had to gather at the temple at the Moedim. They still gathered weekly in the synagogues for Shabbat. I mean, that's what Acts 15 was about. Right. To go to the synagogues on Shabbat to hear the Torah taught so you could be discipled, so you could learn what the Torah is saying. And then to gather in the homes to continue in this relationship and then to meet out in the fields one by one, you know, to just as you come across whomever. None of these was to replace the other, but they were all supposed to work together. 
Okay, so here it, it's uh, it's taking it a step on our heart when we say, "I will prepare a place for him to dwell." Okay, so uh, what was said in Chronicles? How can we, the created, give back to Elohim who made us when all we have is His? Right. So how can we give back to Him? First Chronicles twenty nine eleven says, "Yours, O Yahweh, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heavens and in the earth is Yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Yahweh, and You are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from You, and You rule over all. In Your hand are power and might." And in your hand, it is to make great and to give strength to all. And now we thank you, our God, and praise your glorious name. But who am I and what is my people that we should be able thus to offer willingly for all things come from you and of your own have we given you? That kind of says it, doesn't it? Everything Yah has given us, uh, we acknowledge he has given it to us. And we dedicate it and return it back to him. Hmm. We see an idea here of this truma, uh, kind of a hint towards a first fruit kind of a thing, don't we? That Yahweh is saying that we are to give him before the use of, of the community, right? Um, and in the first fruit, same thing. If the first fruit was given, then the rest of the crop was considered holy and good, and good for use, good for consumption, right? And we, we, read, we read this. If the first fruit is holy, then the rest is holy, right? If the first of the challah is holy, then the rest of, of the challah is, is holy. So it all is, is a process we start to see here with giving, ourse giving of ourselves, body, mind, soul, spirit. Yeah, even, even our possessions and everything else uh, toward him and what he is desiring, so when we give to Yah, we're giving of ourselves for the benefit of who? The community, not just ourselves. It's not just a selfish thing here. When we give of ourselves, and I mean of everything, okay? I know normally when, you, when you're talking to this, people uh, grab your wallet. You know, we always trying to get after money. Well, okay, here's the thing, guys. Uh, we live in a world that where you have to have it, you know? <laughs> but that's not the, the, the fullness and the totality of what this is talking about. That's only one little piece. We're talking about everything, all that you are, all that you have, everything Yah has given you, your body, mind, your talents, your gifts, uh, everything that he has given you that makes you, you, everything he gave you. And so we dedicate that back to him and we give to him. And again, for the use and the benefit of the community as a whole. We see this idea in Romans, don't we? Romans 12, 1 through 5 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, and what is good and acceptable and perfect. Verse 3 for by the grace given to me, to, to I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Look at verse four. For as in one body, we have many members and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many are one body in Messiah and individually members of one another. So the point here being that when we are fulfilling uh, what Yahweh is calling us to do, when we are laying our lives down and walking in our gifting, giftings, our talents, and, and just the things that are pleasing to him, we're, it's going to benefit one another and the rest of the body. If we're just looking at things like, no, I don't want to do that, or I just want to do this, we're not thinking about the body as a whole or the body at large. We're only thinking about me. You know, and um, and ultimately, if that's our attitude, you know, if or are we going to continue to be fed by the vine if we're not producing good fruit that it is to benefit the whole food for th food for thought, pun intended, I guess. Right. Bad pun, but still pun intended. Right. So let's look at truma for a minute. OK, so we looked at to take for me. And now let's look at truma. Truma is from the word room. The, the, the root is the word room, which means to be raised up, to be raised above something, hence lifted up out of, or to be separated for a higher purpose. Now we also see this word, um, they, uh, uh, let me get a closer look because it's kind of small in my notes here. Yidvenu, Yidvenu is from the word Nadav, which is related to Nataf. It means to flow out or from within. 
Now, these two words, uh, they, they're related, and what we find here is they, they both can mean to incite, to make a gift. It denotes a completion or a freedom of will. It's not a mandatory thing you have to do. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to listen to Yahweh. You don't have to be obedient. You don't have to hear what he says, but much more of a blessing if you do, right? Much more of a blessing if you do it out of a cheerful heart. Isn't that what the scripture says as well? God loves a cheerful giver, right? Well, again, that's of everything that you are, to give of yourself of everything, right? So the etymology of the word teruma is not simply a contribution, but literally something raised up. So when we give, it's not just our contribution, but us who are raised up. Rabbi Sachs puts it this way, we survive by what we are given, but we achieve dignity by what we give. Um, that's something to consider. You know, we survive by what we are given. Yah has given us what, what we need to survive, but then what do we do with that in return? See, that's that's uh, how we live our life, and that's living a life that is to honor him, okay? So, and for truma, in most cases, truma refers to designated something for a higher pur purpose or lifting a part of a quantity from a larger quantity. But there are various types of gifts that we see this term truma applied. Uh, two groupings of trumot that we see, one are sacrifices or a redemption of the firstborn, like the tithe of the first fruits, right? The redemption of the firstborn or... Um, uh, sacrifices, things that are lifted up with different, of the different offerings that were given, some of the Thanksgiving offerings, things like that. And then the general tithes, which is the general offering or teruma or the great offering, teruma gedola, was a portion of the finished grain, wine and oil, not of the first, but of the finished. It was separated for the priest prior to the first tithe, Ma'asai Rashon, that was separated for a Levite. So these were different types, uh, groupings of teruma, but we also see three fulfillments of Truma in the scripture as well. We see in the sacrifices in Exodus 29, 27, where it says, consecrate the breast of the wave offering. That word wave offering is Truma and the thigh of any contribution that has been waved and raised up. So the wave is to be lifted up. Okay, again, to be elevated. When you're elevating of the offering, remember, it wasn't just the offering that was elevated. It's symbolically raising you up into the presence of Yah. Okay, this is what this is what we were talking about in, in the, a lot of the offerings that were given. I mean, uh, a lot of the a lot of the uh, korbanot that were given was to uh, a person invested of themselves into this korban, and then it was put on the altar, and then this altar, the fire and the, and the blood and the smoke all up there, it all mixed and went into the presence of Yah. There, thereby, uh, a worshiper could come and be represented into the presence of Yah, and, and in essence, be brought right up into His presence. Okay, and it wasn't just from us, but it was because of the offering that was brought with us. We invested ourselves into that, and then that was lifted up to the Father. So it was a representation of us. You know, put it this way, our blood, sweat, and tears, or our heart, or our joyfulness, or our sorrow, or whatever it was, okay? Uh, next, we look at, so that we have the sacrifices from Exodus 29. Uh, monetary in Exodus 30, verse 13, says, Everyone subject to the census is to pay an offering to Adonai a half shekel, by the standard of the sanctuary shekel, a shekel equals 20 garas. And again, this is something that was given and it was to be uh, lifted up into the presence of Yah. And then we have the of produce as well. Numbers 15, 18. Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, when you come into the land to which I bring you, then it shall be that which you eat of the bread of the land. You shall lift up a heave offering unto Yahweh. This heave offering, this wave offering is uh, the terumah, something that is lifted up to Yahweh. So what we find is that this gift is uh, one way of elevating ourself. It's, it's one way of elevating oneself to, uh, to the presence of Yah. Okay. Numbers 8, 10 through 11, we also see this. So when you bring the Levites before Yahweh, the people of Israel shall lay their hands on the Levites. This was all the people of Israel making an investment of themselves into the Levites. You know, when a person brought an offering before Yahweh, they laid their hands on the offering and they made a confession over it, representing what they were bringing this offering for, 
right? So they, they laid their hands on it and they confessed with their mouth. Again, these, this is an investment of themselves into what was being offered. Well, here, the Levites themselves were being elevated to Yahweh. Now, no, they're not being put on an altar, okay? But again, we're talking uh, symbolism, and, and this is symbolic here, that the uh, people, by coming together and laying their hands on the Levites, are acknowledging they are making an investment into the Levites for the Levites to, to be consecrated to do their job on their behalf. Okay, so when the Levites are elevated... And, and lift it up into the presence of Yah, so are the people. All right, so look at the next verse, verse 11. And, uh, and Aaron shall offer the Levites before Yahweh as a wave offering from the people of Israel that they may do the service of the Lord. So this word that's used for, for wave offering is not terumah, it's tenufah. We've already saw uh, before that the words terumah and tenufah are related etym etymologically. Okay, uh, let's take a look at that. Terumah and tenufah. So both Teruma and Tenufa denote gifts to mankind in general and to God. Tenufa is a horizontal movement to all sides. It directs the object toward the community, toward fellow man. Teruma, the raising and lowering, expresses man's commitment to devote an object and all earthly aims to heaven. In other words, the Teruma is that which is lifted uh, uh, upwards to Yah, you know, vertically, and then the Tunufa is it is is toward one another. It's toward each other. And it's horizontal, and these two are both giving. But the idea here is that before we can give the Tunufa, we have to give the Truma. Before we can give of ourselves to each other, we have to give of ourselves to Him. Okay, so we direct ourselves towards Him, then we can give of ourselves toward one another. Right. Let's keep going. So in the vertical movement, the up and down, the goal of the object is to be dedicated is on a level high above the point at which it presently stands. The object to be dedicated must first be elevated before it can be dedicated. See, must be elevated before it can be dedicated is the teruma before tenufa. Okay, let's keep going. All dedications of money, time, talent, resources, thought, and action are subject to some combination of Truma and Tunufa. The ones that are more naturally devoted to God must also be consciously devoted to the community and vice versa. And then in the process of dedicating these valuables, some may need refinement and purposeful striving before they can be properly directed at their destined end. The point here is that we have to learn to give to the Father first before we can learn to give to one another. Okay? Because that's order. That's the way it's done. Because when we give to him first, we are acknowledging that he has given to us. And then we can uh, benefit from one another and help each other and, and, and work with each other in that, uh, in that blessing that he extends to the rest of that. So again, we see here in Exodus uh, 25, 1 and 2. So speak to the people that they may take from me a contribution. Now let's focus on this point. From every man whose heart moves him, you shall receive the contribution for me. Interesting, isn't it? From every man whose heart moves him. See, that's the thing. Not everybody is willing. Not everybody wants to do it. Not everybody wants to give to, uh, to what the Father is wanting to do in our midst. You know, And if the people don't give to uh, what needs to be done in the community, then the community suffers because it doesn't have it. Okay, so these are the things we need to learn. I mean, yeah, Psalm 133, you know, he named Matov, how good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. This is uh, some things we need to learn. And then uh, learning to work together in the midst of that, you know, blessed are the peacemakers kind of thing, right? Okay, um, so what happens if we're not all willing? What happens if we're not all trying to work together to do this? Well, we have to learn to build his kingdom together. And when we do that, we have to make sure that uh, we are willing to give toward that. Do we just want to reap the benefit of something being among us, or do we actually want to help place our part and our role in building it and, and having it accomplished and functioning properly in our midst? So it's two different things, right? Uh, you may know the story of, of the little red hen. Right. I, I, I believe it's an appropriate illustration here for those who don't know the, the story. Let me give you an extreme uh, breakdown of it. Uh, little Red Hen wanted to make some bread and went around asking for help and no one wanted to help. But when the bread was made, everybody wanted some. <laughs> so that kind of thing. So are we willing to give of ourselves 
to do what the, to do what we need in our midst, to ensure that the things that are needed among us are among us, right? So let's look. Were they all willing back then? Well, let's, let's take a look at it. In Exodus 35, yeah, we're jumping forward 10 chapters, but still, it just you'll see. Exodus 35, verse 4. So Moshe says to whom? To all the congregation of the people of Israel. So all were there, right? And he says, this is the thing that Yahweh has commanded. Take from among you a contribution to Yahweh. Whoever is of a generous heart, let him bring Yahweh's contribution, gold, silver, and bronze. So the question is, were all willing? We see in uh, chapter 25 where he's saying to take the teruma and uh, and receive it of all who are willing, right? So it's reiterated in 35. It's being told again, right? So give, uh, take of all who are willing to give. But the question is, were all willing to give? Let's go forward. 35 verse 20. So then all the congregation of the people of Israel departed from the presence of Moshe and they came. See, that's the and they came. Who's the they? It's not all the congregation of the people of Israel. So he says all the people of Israel were there, then they all left, and then they came. There's a specific grouping here. Who is it? Let's continue reading, and it tells us. Who were the ones that came? Everyone whose heart stirred him, and everyone whose spirit moved him. And they brought Yahweh's contribution to be used for the tent of meeting, and for all its service, and for the holy garments. So they came, both men and women, all who were of a willing heart, brought the bridges, the earrings, the signet rings, the armlets, all sorts of gold objects, every man dedicating an uh, offering of gold to Yahweh. So the need was given, and it was said what was needed, but then the people had to be willing to give it or not. All right? We see that in Exodus 25, verses 3 through 7. He says to take the contribution, but to take it of the ones who are willing to give. Notice when the ones who gave, nobody said, well, I will only give if. No, there were no conditions to put on the giving. It was just a matter of the people gave or they didn't. You know, either they had the willing heart to give or they didn't, right? And, and what was the cause? To build a presence and a place for Yahweh to dwell among us and for us to dwell with him, right? The question I want to give here is, are we preparing a place for Yahweh to dwell? And, and I mean this physically, and I also mean this within ourselves as well. I mean this in both aspects of the word. Are we preparing a place for us to dwell with Yahweh, for him to dwell with us? Are we preparing our hearts? Are we preparing ourselves? And are we preparing places where we can gather and meet to do so? And by preparing a place, I don't just mean, you know, a physical uh, four walls or, or just uh, or a tent or whatever. I mean, even the atmosphere of the place. Are we preparing the place for him to dwell? You know, uh, thanksgiving, a heart of thankfulness, joy, gladness. Are we preparing ourselves and preparing the place for him to dwell? So the question I have here is, what are you building and who are you building it for? What is our attitude concerning the task at hand? Do we work wholeheartedly or do we dread the time that, are, that is spent in the service? Do we work with a giving, willing heart or do we resent the work that's being that done here? I mean, consider this for a moment. When they were in Egypt, they were building for Pharaoh, right? And so now they get out into the wilderness and we're free. Yeah, Yahweh says, hey, I've got a building project for you. Sound a little suspect? No, not really. Two completely different motives. Right. Um, but nonetheless, if you're not looking at it in the spiritual sense, you could very easily say, wait a minute. I just got done with this building project and all this forced labor and all that. And you're telling me that you freed me so that I could go back into forced labor. No, no, that's not it at all. Because uh, Yahweh had said, you know, those whose hearts are willing will be involved in it. So that is the question. Is our hearts willing to do this labor of love to help prepare his kingdom here among us, right? Proverbs 22, 9 says, blessed are those who are generous. Second Corinthians 9, 7 says, each should give according as what he has decided in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Uh, Third John 1, 5 and 6 says, dear friend, you are being faithful to God when you care for the traveling teachers who pass through, even with their strangers to you, because they have told, um, because they have told the body here of your loving friendship. Please continue providing for such teachers in a manner that pleases God. And James three eighteen says, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them who make peace. And again, that takes work. That takes effort. 
So my question here is, are we doing that? Are we willing to make the effort? I mean, consider this. There are over 50 chapters in the Torah that describe the Mishkan, its services, and the things that are involved in it. Creation itself only took two chapters. There are 50 chapters explaining the Mishkan. Two chapters in creation. 15 chapters concerning Avraham, you know, the father of our faith, so to speak, right? You know, our forefather, Avraham. 50 chapters to explain how Yahweh dwells among us and we dwell with him. Are we willing to put the effort in to see this fulfilled in our midst even today? So in order for Yah to dwell with us, right, in order for us to dwell with him, the people had to come together and prepare a place. See, to dwell in the unity with Yah, they first had to learn to dwell together with themselves. During the miracles in Egypt, there were complaints. When they came out of Egypt, there were complaints. When they headed towards the mountain, there were complaints. When they hear, heard the voice of Yahweh, there were complaints. Moshe went on the mountain to receive the word. There were complaints. Moshe received the pattern for the tabernacle, and there were complaints. But during the actual building of the tabernacle, there were no complaints. Where was the focus at that time? The focus at that time was preparing a place for him to dwell, preparing a place for us to dwell with him. Learning to dwell together with each other so that we can dwell with the Father in a place of unity, right? When we dwell in unity, we are preparing a place for Yahweh to dwell. Isaiah 57, 14 says, And it shall be said, build up, build up, prepare the way, remove every obstruction from my people's way. For thus says the one who is high and lifted up, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place and also with him who is of a contrite and lowly spirit to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. Ephesians 3.17 says that the faith and Messiah dwell in your hearts having been rooted and founded in love. That comes what it comes down to, doesn't it? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and all your might, and love your brother, love your neighbor as yourself. Hmm. How do we do that? Let's start learning to build together instead of tearing down. Instead of, instead of uh, uh, trying to destroy one another and put each other down, let's find areas that we can build up the kingdom among us and to build places that are good for his presence to be. Will Yahweh dwell in a place that is, has contention and strife and backbiting and envies and all that? Let's build a place together where we can walk in the fruit of the Spirit so we can see his presence here with us. And we can learn in that, grow in that, and uh, see his kingdom manifest even here, even now. All right? Okay, so uh, that's all we have for you today, guys. Uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you, and uh, may he continue to be a blessing to you. Um, we pray that these teachings, that they encourage you, that they challenge you, but that they help keep a, a good focus while you're trying to walk on the straight path, right? A good focus to not turn to the left or to the right, but keep our eyes set on Yahweh. All right, so uh, bless you guys, and until next time. <music>